Hey everyone, so in this video, we're just going to do a quick little demonstration showing you how you can have a base spawn an object on a timer. Yesterday, at least as of the time of this recording, yesterday I uh, did a quick demonstration using the Cartoon Army World Asset Pack, and I said that I thought it would be great for a rudimentary RTS. I really can't take the time to go through a full RTS tutorial. I still have a full-time job. And I'm already working on another project that I'm neck deep in, and I really want to get that finished. But to supplement yesterday's video, I figured I'd do a quick little spawn video, quick little tutorial to show you how you can instantiate enemy objects using this tutorial. I'm not going to review it again here, but there is a problem with these assets, which I cover in that video. If you're not using these assets, this then then you don't even have to worry about it. If you're using some other assets, you should be fine. Uh, there's just anomaly associated with these that I covered in the other video. So for this video, I've already made the adjustments and I'm not going to go into any detail. So we're going to take our base and we're going to drag and drop it into the scene. So as you can see, you have an open door on the front of the object, which means we want what gets spawned out to be facing this way. So we want this rotation to be applied to the tank and then have the tank move in a forward direction. And the great thing about this is no matter how you have this rotated, if you use this approach, this will work. Because again, the forward rotation is being applied to the tank, and then the tank will then say move in a forward direction. I do want to mention that in your project, you would probably actually use a nav mesh. So I am using a, a rigid body and velocity just for simplicity's sake because we're not really worried about its pursuit and its AI. We just want to demonstrate that this can spawn a, on a timer and then you see the tank drive out on its own power. So we have our base and we're going to take the script which is called spawn tanks and put it on the, um, uh, we're going to put it in the inspector. So now you have the spawn tank script component. So if we go into this, you can see public transform tank object. So by making this public, it becomes available in the inspector. So we're going to take that tank and we're going to drop it there. So the way I like to describe this is what you've done is you've created awareness between this object and this object. So this object can now do things such as spawn it. Okay. If this object was... Um, if it was linked to, say, a text mesh, it could change the text. I have a tutorial showing how to do that. So by creating this linkage, you are letting one object have access to another, and it can make changes to it. Okay, so let's go back to the script. So public transform tank object, that's let, that lets us link the tank. And then in the start section, we're saying start coroutine tank timer. Tank timer is a custom coroutine that we're about to look at that I created. So this says that um, uh, before the first frame has run, when this object has been instantiated, do this just once. Whereas the update section, this gets run with every frame. So I enumerate a tank timer, so that's how you create this. You'd return new, wait four seconds, three, I've said it before. Don't worry about this, just type it out. What this is really, the net effect that you care about is this line will cause a delay measured in seconds, and in this case, it is three seconds. This can be whatever you want. I just don't want it. didn't want you guys sitting around for a while waiting for stuff to spawn. So you'd return new wait for three seconds. Wait for seconds, three. If uh, this is a decimal, then uh, you would need to put in the letter F. But that's pretty standard that a lot of times when you use decimals, in most places, you have to put the F after it. And now we're going to instantiate. So when you see instantiate, think spawn. You know, they talk about enemies spawning and things like that. Well, this is the command that creates a spawn. It's instantiate. So we're creating an instance of an object. So there's three arguments. What has been instantiated? That, which is the tank. Where it's been instantiated? This is the position of the object the script is attached to. The script is not attached to the tank. The script is attached to the uh, base. So we're going to take the base's position and that's where the tank is going to be spawned. Furthermore, the third argument is what's the rotation? Well, we said that we want the tank to be facing 
forward just as our base is facing forward. Okay, so this will use that basis rota rotation and apply it to the tank. This is very important because if you say do a random rotation of the base, this will still work. It will still take whatever the forward position is and apply that to the tank. And then start coroutine tank timer. In other words, at the beginning, when this object is spawned, it says go to tank timer. Tank timer waits three seconds, spawns an object, and then says do it over again. So this brings you back to here, and then you just go through this again. So you do have this endless, unended, unended, unending, uninterrupted loop of every three seconds a new tank is spawned. That's half of the coding, actually more than half. And we'll save that. Don't worry about these other scripts. These are for some of the other tutorials. So here's the tank. And again, we said that we want it to move forward. There is an adjustment I had to make. But again, like I said, don't worry about that. That is explained in the other tutorial. And if you're not using these assets, then you don't have to worry about it. So we want that tank to be spawned out. We have the code for that. Now we want it to move under its own power. So there is our tank. We're going to add component. We're going to go to physics. We're going to go to rigid body. And we're going to use, gra uh, we're, going to, we're not going to use gravity. We don't want it to drop through the ground. And then we're going to add a script, this script here, which we're going to review. I uh, don't recall if I said it, but in yours, you're probably going to use uh, a nav mesh, not a rigid body. I'm not worried about it pursuing anything. I just want to demonstrate proof of concept that yes, it will be facing the direct, right direction and will drive out under its own power. So let's take a look at that tech con script. And all it says is in the start again. So as soon as this object is instantiated, get component rigid body velocity. The velocity is going to look at the transform component of the object the script is attached to, which is the tank. Move forward, and that forward speed is going to be multiplied by three. You can choose whatever speed you want. I just didn't want it creeping really slowly. And if I did not make any mistakes, this should work, and you should just keep seeing tanks come out every three seconds. There you go. So it is off to the side a little bit. There's probably something about the center point. So either the center point of this or the center point of the tank isn't quite centered. So you could always you could make an adjustment for that because I mentioned, I won't go too deep into it, but I mentioned that I had to modify the child components. You could also modify the position. You could slide it over to one direction, to one side a little bit within the parent object. So the parent object would still be spawning at the uh, position of the, um, the base, but the child would actually be pushed over slightly. I'm not too worried about it though. This is just, like I said, if you're not using these assets, you don't have to worry about that anomaly. And about the only thing, other thing that you could do is you could maybe do an animation with the door. The door does not have an animator on it. Okay. So there is nothing here. So you can see there is uh, no animator component and no animator component. So uh, basically, you could either create an animation, or you could use the um, you could use the physics system to have the door travel down, and have it be timed in such a way that it that it travels down just before the tank comes out, and then you could have it travel back up. So you could just add vertical velocity. I'd go through that, but I've already shown that in a separate video. Um, if I can find the link. But um, you can just do a search in my channel and that um, I show you how to, I believe it's open and close cupboard doors using angular velocity, uh, how to slide out a drawer using just regular uh, linear velocity. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to show you in this video is just a simple spawning. And maybe I'll do a couple more of these. But like I said, I'm really neck deep in the uh, RPG Diner uh, project and I really want to get that up and running. It's still in a tutorial state, but I'm getting really close to where I'm going to release it into probably an early access. And if anyone buys it, that will 
be used to fund the final version. I'll use the proceeds to purchase additional assets, just as all those other assets that I'm currently using were already purchased. Okay, so I hope you found this interesting. If there's something else you want to see, just let me know. And uh, please do enjoy the rest of your day.